you were really excited, but was that more of a sense of kind of relief? Like, okay, we're closer to accomplishing our goal. Did you kind of feel it at that moment? Um, I wouldn't describe my emotions in that moment as relief necessarily. Hey Cooper, I uh, just wanted to ask you what it's been like just being able to be a part of, um, you know, this play, this playoff run, this run to the Super Bowl after obviously what you went through in, in, in 2018. Um, I know it can be difficult to talk about that, so I understand if you don't want to rehash the past too much, but just in general, what's that? Um, yeah, it's obviously, uh, you know, a less conflicting experience than it was last time. Um, you know, being able to be a part of this thing all the way through, um, you know, being able to be there with my guys, being able to be in this place now where I get to be a part of preparing and then executing um, the things that we're going to be able to um, you know, put together over the course of these next two weeks. And um, yeah, obviously I have a ton of appreciation for the other side of this as well. Um, but uh, being in this position, being, being able to have the opportunity to go play for a, a, world, a world title uh, it's not something, obviously, that we take lightly, that I take lightly, and uh, very appreciative for this opportunity and just the work that it's taken to get here. And then I saw that you had a, shared a moment with uh, Robert Woods post game. Um, you know, what, if you're willing to share, what did you, what did you say to him? What was that conversation like? And, um, and uh, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, um, I'm not going to share what I, well, you know, what we talked about, but um, being able to have Rob out there, um, you know, just the emotion that he had, the, uh, you know, he sits right next to uh, my wife and my family and uh, being able to hear from her, even just how loudly, how crazy he was cheering for us and pulling for us and um, and being able to see him out there on that field. It's, it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a special thing having a, some, someone like Rob on your team, having him as a friend um, and the, just what he means for this team, even when he's not able to be out there with us. Um, it's just, it's a special thing. He's a, he's a special, uh, you know, very special person. So, uh, you know, I, I love Rob. He's going to be my brother for the rest of my life. And, uh, you know, being able to share that time with him, that's something I'll, you know, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Did you guys do your rewatch already this morning? Uh, no, we have not watched the film. Like that guys are, you talking going over things as a team? Yeah, or you personally, I was just going to ask for you, either in the moment or, or on a rewatch, um, any detail, I mean, the leverages and the margins were so important in that game, right? Mm -hmm. So any any details to you that particularly stood out in terms of uh, you guys finding a way in those margins? Yeah, well, uh, you know, the 49ers, they did a great job. Um, you know, I touched on it a little bit yesterday, but they, uh, you know, they don't play a lot of different stuff. You didn't see a, you know, it's not a bunch of exotic coverages or anything like that. It was cover three, cover four, some fire zones, and mixed in a little bit of two. Um, but they play it very well. They've got good players that know how to how to play it. Uh, they know where their help is and know where their issues are. Um, I thought Matthew did a great job being able to get through progressions, being able to change his arm slots on some throws that were um, incredible, fitting some balls into some really tight windows, um, and then just trusting some throws too, where it's just, hey, I, I'm trusting that, you know, the receivers are going to be detailed enough to get where they're supposed to be. Um, and then guys just being able to separate at the right times and be where they're supposed where they're supposed to be um, uh, within the timing of that play. So uh, there's a lot of things that we did really well. Um, obviously, a lot of stuff that we've got to clean up as well. So um, yeah, I just thought I just thought he did did a great job. Do you get the sense that he he likes uh, being under uh, not duress, but he likes kind of having someone challenge him or have uh, a scheme challenge him in that way? Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't think he likes being hit. I think he's past that point. I think his days of running people over and doing all that are kind of behind him. Um, I think he'd tell you the same thing though with that. But uh, I think he, I think he enjoys being, he says it all the time, you know, he's like, hey, let's go do something cool. Like, he wants to be able to do something kind of sweet. Uh, you know, being able to change his arm slot, like come make him, make him move off of his base and throw around someone. Um, I think he enjoys that. I also noticed you uh, when you caught the uh, pass. It was, I believe, later you know, in the fourth quarter. You kind of had, kind of yelled like an emotion, like you know, you were really excited. But was that more of a sense of kind of relief, like okay, we're closer to accomplishing our goal? Did you kind of feel it at that moment? Um, I wouldn't describe my emotions in that moment as relief necessarily. Um, I was just a, uh, 
I don't think you can just be yelling at the top of your lungs and be relieved at the same time. So um, it was kind of just uh, yeah, a rare moment of emotion, I think, from me. I uh, just excited about feeling like, you know, we, we have put ourselves in a position now to be able to take control of this game. Um, and uh, obviously in that situation, you'd like to go down now there and you know, run some more time off the clock, not to put your defense out in the field. Um, some stuff, obviously, like I said, we're going to be able to clean some stuff up. Um, but yeah, just a, a moment of uh, a little bit of emotion for me. Hey Cooper, this is a team that had a lot of the same skill position players for a few years in the middle of your career. And then this year, you've gone through quite a bit of turnover. You start out adding Matthew. And then since mid-season or thereabouts, you've lost Robert, Deshaun, John Munt, Daryl Henderson. You've added Odell. And then you lost Tyler last night. That would be a tough thing for a lot of offenses. But your offense is still getting 400 yards a game. And you've lost one game since Thanksgiving. Where do you see that resilience coming from? Like I said, I think it's just the process that we take um, across the board, no matter who you have stepping into that role, no matter how many reps you did or did not get during that week, the expectation for your preparation uh, is at a premium. And, um, you know, I think we've done a good job setting that standard here. Um, and it's not about, I mean, just you don't, you are not afforded the excuse, well, I didn't get the rep in practice. You know, it's about, you know, being dialed in. You're able to, see, if you're able to see the rep, you're able to, you know, be a part of then going out and executing that. And that's it. That's the expectation we have here. So uh, having guys that are dialed into that um, really allows you when you go through that, that kind of adversity, you never want to have to deal with that. Obviously losing players um, like we have and, um, but having guys then that can step in and, you know, step in and execute their job to the best of their ability, that, that's a huge thing for us. But especially in the last few weeks, McVeigh has talked a lot about, you know, a lot of you guys and types of kind of competitors you guys are. Uh, what kind of competitor is McVeigh? And, and what are those moments, I guess, when you're kind of able to see that? How, do you, how can you tell kind of what's inside of him in that, in that regard? Yeah. Um, uh, he is, yeah, he is, he is a, um, I think he, he at times, like, yeah, he, maybe he'll say this, maybe not. But I think at times he's, I mean, he walks the line between like unhealthy competition and healthy competition. Uh, you know, he wants to win at all costs. Um, and, uh, you know, he needs aware of it. He knows that he's, uh, he's a psycho, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I wouldn't want anyone else leading this team. You know, what he's able to call us to the standard, uh, the um, tone that he sets for this team and just the you know, walking embodiment over and over again. I mean, he is, he is consistent in his expectations for people. Um, and in, in the energy that he brings day in and day out. So, um, you know, he's just someone that wants to win. And when you have someone that wants to win like him, uh, he's just going to continue to put guys in positions to do that. Um, and you know, you, you never have to question, um, you know, his preparation and, you know, the work that he's being able to put in week after week, day after day, putting us in the best position to execute. Um, so just a lot of appreciation and respect for someone that, um, puts the time in and, and just cares about his guys as much as he does. So, um, you know, he's a, he's an incredible competitor, incredible coach, uh, incredible person to be able to play for. Uh, do you have any uh, memories that are that stick out actually watching Super Bowls, either growing up or, you know, things that really that stand out in your mind from those games? And if, if so, what are they? Um, yeah. So, uh, there's been a couple ones. I mean, um, obviously the the Rams Titans game, you know, sticks out. The ending of that one, um, you know, the Baltimore game when the you know the lights go out. Um, being able to watch, I think uh, when the Seahawks and the Broncos played, and it was a the an awful game. You know, I remember being very frustrated because I was like, I'm excited to watch a good football game and we didn't, didn't end up getting it. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I remember some stuff, you know, but I've always been, I mean, I've always been someone that I think I have a lot more respect for the process than I do the, the moment or like the, the pinnacle of whatever it is that's happening at the time, um, you know, allows me just to kind of appreciate, you know, the, the totality of something versus, you know, a, um, a binary yes, no, at the end of a game.